All right, uh, I just got this Ryobi Universal Rattler cable and um, the matching uh, Ryobi router at the store the other day. I'm going to try to put the table together and get it set up. I figured, why not? I'll just shoot a video of how to put it back, put it together. I was interested in knowing how it went together before I got it, see what was all involved. Um, so I figured, yeah, I'll shoot it. Maybe I'll share it so others can learn. Uh, here's the instructions. Seem pretty straightforward. I've already put the, uh, that's the power switch control module thing. Uh, I just got one for your router and one for the shop vac or something. So, uh, next step is to bolt these guys, screw those guys down, and, uh, I just put clips in as I go make progress so here we go all right that was pretty quick put these guys in just uh six screws next uh looks like we're gonna put the legs on okay i had to uh find a little baggie it was in uh one of the bigger bags of stuff but there's 16 of these little guys that hold the uh the legs on so, I just want to let you know what you had to look for. Okay, so, according to the instructions, they point out the left leg on the front. That's this side of the table. Um, gets the English label. And the right leg gets the French label. In Spanish. I don't know why, but they say it's that way. So, that's the way I'm going to do it. That's English. That goes over here. All right, now that we got the uh, Spanish and French over here and the English on this side, um, all four legs are on it. And uh, it's actually a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now, next thing in the list is to figure out which router you're gonna use for whether it's a uh, Porter cable or rigid or Ryobi or whatnot. So, so I'm going to need to inspect this a little closer and figure out what, what it is. And uh, I'll be back to figure out and I'll let you know, at least for using the Ryobi router of theirs, which one's which. So I'll be back. Okay, so I uh, decided to uh, open up the box on this guy because uh, it references whatever type of uh, router you have and brings up about uh, removing the throat plate and figure out which router you might have and then figure out what key keyhole up here you're going to drill out so you can adjust the height from the top of the table down through. So I pulled this guy out and on the bottom side you can see where it has the uh, the different port cable models and the yeah port cable Milwaukee rigid and Ryobi here I'm looking at it upside down but um, it's the way it's actually indicated here but the letters are upside down here uh, oh no it's not I'm just looking at it upside down anyways um, and it says you know drill a hole through this thing figuring out wherever that is. Uh, so you can use it, your depth adjustment tool, which isn't included with the table, but it might be included with your router. Maybe. So, I don't know. If you've got a router with an adjustment tool, um, then you probably want to do this step so you can adjust it. If not, you're probably going to be reaching underneath the table and adjusting the depth or the height, whichever way. So... Um, but yeah, so I decided, let me look inside this box and it comes with this really cool bag. I was surprised to see this. So, um, do like a little unboxing. We'll do an unbagging review here. One handed unbagging review. All right. Cardboard and that we'll get to that later 
Nice. So, I don't know if you're one handed, you might not be able to get this thing out of the bag. Or you're probably better at this than me. So, yeah, there it is. It's in there. What's the stuff? Nice wrench. Power cable. Some nice cable. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna push you down. Okay, so I finally got it out of the bag. Um, turns out unbagging this is more of a butt kicking than I've ever had trying to unbox something before. Um, this is the router. It's pretty sweet. Um, this model's got the clamp and the little screw height adjustment. So that's pretty nifty. Um, you know, it's not, it's not that difficult to rotate this to raise and lower the the unit looks like it can be. No, I need that to focus. You can see that lowering. It's not too bad. Um, so yeah, the, the key thing I mentioned earlier, uh, May. May be included. Yeah, with this one, so far from what I've seen, it's not included. So the whole step to drill this hole out here so you can get through this hole to attach to this uh, little hex drive on the bottom of this. So when it's upside down on the table, the tool comes down through, connects onto this, and you can turn that hex. Need that to focus. Oh. You'll be able to turn that hex from above and adjust the height. Um, yeah, so uh, May means not included with Ryobi, uh, at least this model, which is uh, that one. Okay, G, I think, is this one because it's the green. Let's look here. There it is right there, R163GK, because it's new right there. New does not have height adjustment tool included. There you have it. All right, I'm going to keep keep moving forward here with this. Okay, so if you happen to have this router, I'll make it real quick and simple. It's going to be these three great big, big screws out of the bag. A bunch of those tiny ones, and for the Ryobi, they must be these great big guys, at least for this model. So they go right in there, and they match up with that one with threads, that one with threads, and that one with threads. This one, no threads. That's the pass through for the for the height adjustment. So uh, maybe I can figure out some type of. Uh, Maybe some type of socket or something to reach down in there. But until then, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to move on. just want to let you guys know. If you get this 163K, GK, whatever, it's the three big ones. Okay, that was quick. I got the router mounted with these three bolts. Um, yeah, that pass-through should be about there. Um, so I'm just going to put this plate back in place and uh, I'm going to use the, you had to take this one and this one up uh, to take this piece out. Now, this is kind of neat. I don't know if, how much I like it or not, but uh, it uses these set screws to level this plate inside this opening. So what you do is probably adjust this guy. Like this, and it raises and lowers the plate. I don't know if you can see that. Get that to see, focus. Focus on that. Just turn it. Take 
it on down. It's too high. It's pretty good. Just gonna tighten it once I bring this down. So get that down there. That's pretty good. That's not bad. I was surprised at that. So you can adjust these these all four sides of this thing so so I guess the feed direction so you're gonna be pushing pieces in this way we'll make sure this doesn't catch on here and you definitely don't want to catch it on that side any of these so um height the last one you bring it up a little bit for this one Time you tighten these guys up, it always pulls it down tighter. So, still kind of high there. Loosen that up a bit. It's not too bad. A little bit low there, but feeding it over, it's much rather to drop over that than get caught on it. So, having this tighter on this side is better than this is the important side. So, I don't know, that's, just being a plastic plate, I think I've seen pretty much every other one has had a metal one, so, the plastic or foam or whatever this hard, hard foam is, I don't know, might be a, uh, hit against it quality wise, being made out of plastic, but we'll see, we'll see how it works, once I get it all put together. So that's that step, inserting it back in. Oh yeah, make sure that notch is towards the back. It's away from you. So, all right, moving on. Okay, so real quick, you sort of use a straight edge. So we'll slide back and forth across here. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary if the straight edge adjusts it or not, but I think the important thing is to make sure that you're not hitting or I don't have it to where it'll catch in the uh, when you when you're feeding through. That's the the key. But the didn't really seem to do much. I, I took it, did what they said here, and what I had done earlier was pretty much good. Um, so yeah, but that's that's how they recommend to do that. At least they. Uh, they supply a hex key for that, so that's cool. So next step, I gotta turn the thing over. Then I gotta find wherever I put the fence, and uh, we'll get it and put it on here. So yeah, I gotta turn the flip this thing around, and I'll be back. All right, these are the guys you gotta dig out of a bag. Uh, they're gonna hold your fence down. Finally found the fence. And uh, looks like it goes, it goes on here like this. You just bolt down through these slots, or rather up through. So, can't do this one handed either. It's worth a try, huh? No, I won't torment you guys. I'll be back. Alright. I have it there. These guys loosen them up and you can slide this back and forth. It's pretty sweet. One thing I noticed with that flat down, when you try to slide this thing forward, yeah, that's tight. Um, catches on the uh, guide there. But, you know, out of the way and move it anyway so it might not be an issue um it's, you usually get the different distance here so i gotta bump this guy up here to zero right over here mm, not too bad Get that up a bit you should be pretty centered on the bit yeah, not too bad. Just have to adjust these back and forth. We'll get to that. 
I think the next step is to uh, put the ring in there. So let's see. Yeah. I guess we gotta find. Okay, so I guess it depends on whatever bit you're using, uh, which uh, insert plate you want to use. So let's try one. Get these options here. There you go. OCD. So let's pick that one. It's in the middle. Looks like. Uh, It's saying press the throat plate into insert plate slot until it snaps in place. And I'm betting the key thing you gotta remember here is that the tab goes towards the back. So make sure the tab lines up. Tight. Probably have to turn this thing around so I can get to it better. I'm reaching over the back of it. Mm. Yeah, I'll probably just make it tight just so it's gonna be decent for the for a lot of usage, but mm, it seems a little bit intense. Ugh, man. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll keep moving. Okay, so next step in the instructions, it shows how to mount the finger, the fingerboard, featherboard rather. Featherboard. I just think it's fingerboard. It looks like a little finger sticking down here, but I think it's so you don't lose your fingers. So use a feather board so you don't lose your fingers. Um, or to keep the piece from jumping out. But the way it goes on is pretty much lose your balance and fall over. Um, so I already stuck that one in, but loosen up, screw up. The bolt head sticks out. Slide that bad boy in the rail. Tighten it up. Just this thing for whatever piece of wood you're going to try to show up here. Demo it with this guy. Put the bad boy on there. Let's tighten it up. And there we go. Cool. Next thing talks about the uh, starting pin. So. I guess that little pin. Shoot, where'd it go? Here it is. Uh, this little guy. Pretty much stick the bad boy in there. You can use that instead of a what? A bag we had for the router. All these guys are going in it. Any piece I'm not using is going in that bag. All right. So use that starting pin. You're able to come in. Hold on a minute. I forget how to do this. Yeah, almost. Tap it in there. Line it up. Whack it in there. There, that's how you do it. No, nothing to it. Anyway, starting pin. Use that bad boy instead of the fence if you're doing something that says odd shaped or. Uh, Odd shaped pieces, so that's neat. Thanks. Um, but yeah, you put it to the right side, you can feed it through. Uh, there's a hole over here, so I don't know why you couldn't put it over there, but it might be an issue of it kicking or something. 
and we'll, we'll find out. So, for right now, that bad boy, boom, going in the bag. Uh, next thing, miter gauge, still in the bag. Let me open it up, I'll get back to you. Okay, so pretty much miter gauge. Take it out of the bag and you drop it in that rail. Little indicators on the right. You're done. That's all you gotta do there. So uh, it's kinda kinda wiggles in there. I don't know. We'll find out if I'm gonna use that or not. Um, but that's that. Next on the list, vacuum hose attachment. You pretty much just stick it in the back here. Self-explanatory. Put your hose in there. You're done. All right. Um, next step on here is how to put clamps on it to hold it to a table so you don't have to bolt it down. And the other is showing you how to bolt it down. Um, uh, yeah, you're going to bolt it down, but they recommend using bolts that are not included. So keep that in mind. This is quarter 20, so I don't know if you had for a different work service. You're going to use these holes right here in the legs. Uh, uh, for clamping it, I'm just demoing it here. Got a little bar clamp. Doesn't do too bad hanging on to it. That's not going anywhere. Uh, put these on there. That holds it. If you had to. Let's see clamp. I'll slide in there. That 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 really gets in there for a good clamp on it. So oh yeah, that's good. And that's why that's cut out the way it is. But so C clamp, like I have in the picture. It's the way to go if you can. But for quick, I got that. It'll probably be that or a C clamp or one of them, either, both, neither. I don't know. Find out. Turn the page. We got all kinds of operational stuff. Cool. I get to make noise and sawdust. So, well, there you go. That's how to use a miter gauge. Looks like I got some reading, but. So far it looks like, oh yeah, that's right, power cable for this guy. Comes over to this, plugs in, and you'll turn this on. And then you'll control it. Right there. Here's your safety key. There's no turn it on or off. Without that, so don't lose it. I'm going to keep mine safely right there. Um, all right so far putting it together wasn't that hard um i don't know it's been 23 minutes of video so it's probably been half hour total putting it together finding the stuff fighting getting this out of the bag all in all not too bad uh ease of setup i'd say not too bad We'll see if I have to fine tune this anymore. Um, obviously, these settings in here, loosening these up, depending upon the the bit I've got in there. And uh, yeah, so we'll get there little by little. All right. Well, hope that was helpful. Any questions? Let me know. Thanks. Have a good one.